Today we have cherry plum. This is one of my very favorite woods and it comes to us from longtime viewer and good friend Tuffy Marginez. I've turned quite a bit of this. It's always a beautiful piece at the end. It's kind of tough getting there sometimes. Uh, the wood's quite hard, difficult to turn, but it's so it's worth it. Good morning, the good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop. Howdy, let's take a closer look at it. The piece is about six inches long about seven inches wide, about three inches tall. I'm going to take it over here to the drill press, drill a flat spot for my chuck jaws to set against. In the center of that, I'm gonna drill a hole for my woodworm screw. We're gonna get it mounted up on the lathe and get to turning. I have the piece mounted up on the woodworm screw. We're gonna be turning at 550 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. Wow, it's dull already and it was sharp when I started. This is just really, really hard wood, really dry. I'm gonna go sharpen up. I guess this is going to end up being a round piece. I got to get rid of these flat ends. They don't look so good. Alright, we, we might go with that, but I need to come down here, make sure the bottom is flat, and put a tenon on there. I guess it was pretty flat. I'll mark out for the tenon. Now I'm going to use this diamond point tool that I just sharpened on my belt sander to straighten up the sides of the tenon. Wow, sharp. Wow. I gotta get used to it, I guess. Maybe I'm too low. No? That's good. Well, I kind of think we're done. I like the shape. It's kind of rounded over at the top a little bit. It's nice and barrel shaped kind of. I, I like it. So we're going with that. Time for sanding. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex at 120 grit because this bark is very coarse, very hard. Normally I do 180, but I'm going to do 120 and then I'm going to do 180 and, and then I'll stop there. That's as fine as I like to do the bark. When that's done, I'll switch to my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. And I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on.
And I'll do a little bit more of that, but that's what it looks like. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 410. So that looks pretty darn easy. I'll be back here in just a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well this is just going to be a little cutie, that's all. I really like the shape. It was kind of accidental but kind of on purpose. I saw it happening so then I decided to go with it. That's kind of the way wood turning is. For me anyway. Don't necessarily have anything in mind when I start. Just see what comes up. This is shellac based sanding sealer that I'm applying. I can see that it really only needs one coat but I'll put on two just so I don't miss anything. And then uh, two coats of shellac over this. And I'll be brushing the bark here in just a second. Let me look at the bottom here. You'll see what a difference that bark makes in the overall look of the piece. It's, it's pretty dramatic. So I've got just some sanding sealer in this little can. And my little brush. Kind of a purplish bark. Plum color, I guess. Cherry plum is the wood. And cherry plum is a fruit. Kind of like a plum, but smaller. I've never had one. But Tuffy has told me about them. And just in case I've overlapped onto the wood from the bark, I like to come behind with a rag with fresh shellac or fresh sealer on it to wipe up any brush marks right along this edge. So there you go. That's pretty much what it's going to look like. I'll get on another coat of this and two coats of shellac and I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside and I'm looking forward to that. See you in a bit. I have the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck. I've got an absolutely gorgeous finish on the outside here. I can't wait for you to see it. We're going to be turning at 1320 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on. be far enough. I do plan to undercut it some. I'm going to go sharpen up. <laughs> I wanted to take just a minute to talk about my gouge. There's been a lot of comments about how short it is. And I don't want anybody feeling sorry for me. I do have another one that I've been using. I've sharpened this one probably, I don't know, 10 or 15 times. But I, I do have another. And I have another one as well that I haven't used at all. It's brand new. So I've got backups. I just like this one, that's all. I just like it. Sometimes when I need more reach, I'll, I'll grab this one and one day this one will wear down to who knows what. I don't know how short it can get. I'm going to change to this hollowing tool so that I can undercut the sides a little bit more. I can't quite get there with my gouge. So I'm going to use that just a little bit here and then we'll get back to the gouge. Yeah, that's much better. 
I might come back to it, but that'll get me going in the right direction. I better see how deep we are, huh? I think we're getting pretty close. Well, we have about a half inch. I see there's a crack showing up there, or maybe it's been there. Okay, we're deep enough. I'm gonna switch to my negative rake scraper for a minute. We're done. Time for sanding. I love the look of a piece like this. Rounded on the sides and undercut on the inside. But boy, they are a bear to sand, I'll tell you. That's why you don't see me do them very often. Uh, I'm going to be using my 2 inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400. I want you to watch. I'll try and bring you in a little closer. I want you to watch how I'm doing this. This is a pretty ragged outside edge, so I'm just using the top. You know, you don't want to get down here. Bad news, just using the top and, and this outside edge a little bit. Be really careful when you do these kinds of things. Either that or hand sand it, but I hate hand sanding even worse. Let me get my mask on, I'll show you what it looks like. Lay the spinning at about 380. Light cut, light cut. A lot of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the inside just like I did the outside. I'll bring you back when it's time to take the tenon off. See you in a bit. I've got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. It does have a non-slip surface, but I want a little extra protection around these edges. So I'm gonna add another piece over that and bring up my bowl and bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center into that. I'm gonna bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up and see if it's running true. It's right on the money. Apply a little more pressure. Turn the speed up to about 600 RPM. Going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. I'm going to stop and check for clearance. We have good clearance. I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch sweat back bowl gouge so that I can get in there closer. And I'm going to turn the speed down to about 400 RPM and just keep working it away. Now that's very small. I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. 
right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch, and when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. And I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shot to this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, here it is. One cherry plum live edge bowl in the books. And it's a beauty. It is a beauty. I love everything about it. Just the right amount of bark. Just the right amount of curve. It's flawless. It's just perfect. There's the bottom all finished up. And I'm always asked, what do I sign with? I sign with a Sharpie Ultra Fine Point and I apply paste wax over that. And it came out just perfectly. Gorgeous inside and out. Cherry Plum just never disappoints. And of course this is my favorite side right here. I love this. But it looks good from any angle. It, it was very difficult to sign to uh, sand the inside edge here. That is very difficult, and I did break off one of my sanding mandrels. Well, not the whole mandrel, but uh, the top part, the sanding part, broke right off. That cost me about eighteen bucks, I think. <laughs> but that's just part of the game. I sure hope you like it. I just love it. I just love it. I hope you do. It was a lot of fun to make. Thank you, Tuffy Marginas, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.